you're watching the air report lots of crazy stuff going on in AI today we have a great show for you let's get into it OpenAI has filed a trademark application for GPT-5 this has actually happened about two weeks ago but the internet is just finding out the application mentions downloadable software tasty still I advise not getting your hopes up yet even GPT-4 is not yet fully released it's still an alpha version 5 will likely take months at the very least and while we were talking gpt5 gpt3 is already crushing college students at logical and reasoning gpt3 performed very similarly to the 40 students that took the standardized test so if you don't think you're wiser than an average college student you can outsource all of your reasoning and decision making to chat gpt speaking of outsourcing Remote work platform Upwork is partnering with OpenAI to work on a new program that will feature freelance workers who have shown proficiency in working with OpenAI's API. Also, the program will feature 250 AI skills that Upwork offers. 250 AI skills. That sounds like a lot of jobs. Yeah, I actually worked on Upwork in a previous life before starting my own thing. And now I often hire talent through Upwork. They are pretty good. The fees are a bit high maybe, but they provide decent service, the people there are pretty good. So if you're looking to dip your toes with some AI related work, check out Upwork. AI talent will get more attention and nice salaries over there. And speaking of jobs in AI, a study by the Pew Research Center finds that one in every five American workers has a high exposure to AI tech. It's still not clear if that means their jobs would be enhanced by AI or they will be completely replaced by AI. My guess is most of them will have their jobs enhanced, but some will see their jobs automated entirely. Another study by the, another study by the Chamber of Commerce estimates that 800,000 jobs in Texas are threatened by AI. Self-checkout and automated payment have already replaced some cashiers in the blue-collar sector, but the white-collar sector is the next target. The study conductors also note that there will be new jobs created with the boom in technology that AI will cause. And one more study, this time by McKinsey, finds that 79% of the survey participants have had some exposure to generative AI, either at work or outside of it, with 22% claiming they already use it for work extensively. The usage is the greatest in the US, and the fields related to technology, media and telecom have the most active users. They use it mostly for marketing and sales, product and service development, and service operations such as customer support. Yeah, I don't know how many other ways are there of saying this. AI is here to stay and it's gonna help you do your job, whether you like it or not. And since we mentioned AI in media, News Corp uses generative AI to produce more than 3000 articles a week for Australian local news. Wow, testing it on the Aussies first, I might team of four staffers generates the stories on weather, fuel prices, and traffic conditions. These are all hyper-local news stories for places that can be as small as 15,000 population. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. These news companies create entire articles that are essentially just one data point. People search Google for what's the fuel price in Backwaterville, Australia, and instead of getting a simple answer like $3, they get an entire article. It's essentially an SEO play. I'm probably gonna start doing this on my own blogs to be honest. No reason to miss out on this. It seems like Google has either no intention or no ability to punish AI generated content. Might as well go for it. On the other side of the coin however we have content creators and artists like Kelly McKernan who are not too happy with AI being trained on their art. She searched her name on a website named Have I Been Trained? tool that can report on whether text-to-image models have used an artist's work to train on, and she found more than 50 of her art pieces. Suddenly, all of these paintings that I had a personal relationship and journey with had a new meaning. It changed my relationship with those artworks, she says. I felt violated. If someone can type my name into an AI tool to make a book cover and not hire me, that affects my career and so many other people. Now, she and other artists are suing Stability AI for copyright infringement. Look, I'm all in favor of move fast and break things, but I'm also in favor of after moving fast and breaking things, maybe go back and fix things and make it right. Is it right that AI is trained on people's data without asking for their permission? 
Well, if we're to get perfectly moral about it, then maybe no, it's probably not okay. Even though it may be legal by the way, it still just doesn't feel right. But now we have all of these cool new toys to play with and that's mostly because fast moving entrepreneurs didn't ask for permission. If they did ask for permission, we probably wouldn't have AIs like we do today. That said, creators maybe should get compensated. For some reason, I hope they will. Even though, again, AI image generators are transforming their work, which is not illegal. It feels a bit unfair because, well, AI is just so powerful, but I think this is not against the current laws. Alright, moving on, AI can be used for sustainable agriculture. Robots can milk cows and monitor their health, farm and monitor pigs and take better care of them, and destroy harmful weeds and bugs that attack plants. Interesting, old McDonald had a farm. But young McDonald will automate it, modernize it, and make it more sustainable. Next, Google will revamp Assistant and add the generative AI features to it, making it more like ChatGPT and Bard. Mm, okay, that sounds like an obvious move and probably a smart move for Google too. I'm even a little surprised it took them this long. That said, we might be crossing a dangerous line here. So far, generative AI has mostly been read-only, meaning it can provide you with information or generate new information, but that's about it. Google Assistant and other smart devices, on the other hand, can perform actions for their owners that result in consequences in the real world. It's no longer read-only. All I'm saying is, by mixing these two, they're kinda starting to give generative AI the power of agency. They better not mess this one up. Also, somewhat related, Amazon are stepping up their AI game and are announcing the creation of a new team of AI super talent and are starting to work on the company's most ambitious LLM. The new AI is supposedly aimed at improving Alexa for now it seems. Great. Another tech giant working on giving AI assistants the power of generative AI. What could possibly go wrong here? And finally, a great great article from Ari Schulman at thenewatlantis.com. I suggest you read it. I will leave a link to it in the description. In summary, the author argues that there have been many false starts for AI throughout the decades, many hype cycles and bubbles and gold rushes that eventually ended up with disappointment and skepticism. So far, there has always been some hidden mechanism, some man behind the curtain that has been the true driving power behind what people have thought of AI, which has always meant we don't really have true AI. However, in the words of every cheating boyfriend out there begging for a second chance, this time things will be different, babe. For starters, ChatGPT and other similar AIs are general, which is in sharp contrast to even the most bleeding edge AIs so far, all of which has been very specific and only good for a few specialized tasks. Today's AIs can also understand natural language and respond in natural language as well, which effectively passes the Turing test. I know we keep moving the bar on what's considered AI, but for a long time the Turing test was the gold standard, and it's safe to say that ChatGPT aced that test. Probably the most impressive feat of AIs today compared to their predecessors is that they understand context, at least to a large degree. The author lists a few other properties of ChatGPT that are truly impressive, especially in comparison to other state-of-the-art AIs. That's why this time we may be truly onto something, and that's the way it is. That was the AI report. Things are getting more exciting every day, it seems. I'm glad I get to be on this adventure. If you shared that opinion, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you tomorrow.